Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Thunder 35 here, bringing you guys yet another game collection video, and I believe this one will be my final game, my final game collection video, the handhelds. Now, I don't have a huge handheld collection for any one particular handheld, so I'm just going to combine all of them, all the handhelds I currently own, into one video. So I'm going to show you my uh, Game Boy Advance games, my PSP games, and my PS Vita, Vita games, all in this one video, because I don't have a lot for either one, so I'm just going to put them all into one video. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and get started with the, the Game Boy Advance games. Okay, first up, for I have for the Game Boy Advance, I own the game, uh, Crash Bandicoot Entrance, here. Uh, I, a lot of these Game Boy Advance games, I don't have the, I have the boxes around here somewhere, I just don't know, like, where exactly they're at. So I can't, like, show the boxes where, but I have the boxes around here somewhere, but basically I have, like, the, you know, the cart for Crash Entrance. I thought this game was pretty alright, I never, like, I don't, I never beat this game, I don't think I ever, like, now, I think I might have beaten the game, but, like, trying to get the 100% in this game was really, really freaking hard. Like, I don't know if it was just me or what, but trying to 100% this game was really difficult. Also, I don't know where I've placed it. I think I might have it, um, in a box somewhere along with some other things or something. But I also have, uh, Crash Bandicoot the Huge Adventure for the, uh, Game Boy Advance as well. Next I have is um, Kirby's Nightmare in Dreamland for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, I've I haven't been I've never been like too like deeply huge into Kirby like the games. The only few uh, Kirby games I really played was this one, and then my friend had Kirby 64 on his N64 back in the day, so I played some of that at his uh, his place. I mainly like I mainly like got into Kirby through the. Um, through the TV show, I believe that design is based off of the Kirby Right Back At You uh, cartoon that came on uh, Fox Box back in the day. I like watching the cartoon; that was pretty cool. I think watching cartoons would made me want to um, try this game. So it was like one of the few uh, Kirby games I played. It's been like a really, really long time since I played this. Honestly, it's been a long time since I played any of my uh, uh, handheld games. But I remember this game was pretty cool. Like. Uh, but yes, this, from what I remember, from what little I played this game, it was pretty cool. It was a pretty fun little uh, game. Was, I don't think it was like too long of a game or too difficult or anything, but it was a pretty cool game. Okay, next up on my little miniature Game Boy Advance collection is um, Sonic Advance. This game was really cool. I remember playing this game a lot, like sitting in the back of my parents' car playing on my Game Boy Advance SP. Playing through this game it was really cool. I don't think I ever beat this game though. I got like stuck or lost in like a snow level area or something like that. I can't remember. It's been like a really long time since I played this game. But for what though, I managed to play through it. I thought it was a pretty fun uh, game. I still think about and remember this game uh, to this day. Sonic Advance was really good. I think I know there's like at least three Sonic Advance games. I remember my friend had one other one. I think it was Sonic Advance 3. I played a little bit of that one. I never owned that one, but. I played a little bit of that one, and that one, uh, for I remember, was pretty cool too. But I have like the most memories from this one, especially the music. Seriously, the music in this game is freaking phenomenal. Especially like I think it's the first stage in the game, it's like Neo Green Hills or something like that. Like this really nice, uh, tranquil uh, music plays during the background, and it's like a really, really nice, like chill song that I still remember and to this day and still listen to sometimes outside of the game because it's just that good. Like. Sonic can always manage to have like some really banger soundtracks just for some reason, like, I don't know how he does it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for, but Sonic Advance is a pretty cool game. I, I enjoyed this game when I uh, played it. It's been like a long time though, but it, it was fun. I have fond uh, memories of me playing this game quite a bit. Next I have is a uh, SpongeBob SquarePants Super Sponge for the Game Boy Advance. This game was also another game I thought was, uh, it was, it was alright, I actually didn't mind it too much, it was a pretty fun, uh, game, it had some, like, you know, tough and kind of annoying moments in there, like, Sandy's Tree Dome, and this stuff was really annoying, you just have to, like, keep jumping up, you know, and collecting, like, water so you don't dry out, and just, like, the, the platforming in that stage is very tiny and stuff, it's easy to, like, fall, that was a really annoying level, but, it wasn't too bad from what I played of it. Now this is actually, this game actually has two versions. There's the Game Boy Advance version and then there's the version of Super Sponge on the PS1. Now, I've never played the PS1 version of Super Sponge, but I have seen gameplay videos of it and stuff. And 
And uh, to be honest with you, from the way it looks, I actually think, to be honest with you, I actually think the uh, the Game Boy Advance version of this game is like the better version of Super Sponge. Like the way the PS1 version just looks, or not just the way it looks, like just the way like it plays and stuff. It has like some things that are different and stuff. Like I said, I haven't like actually played the PS1 version of Super Sponge myself. Is but um just you know from what I've seen of this. In the PS1, I mean, I've played this in the PS1 version. I might maybe still give it a chance so I can make like a thorough comparison myself. But um, yeah, I feel like the the Game Boy Advance version of Super Sponge is actually the way to, to go if you ever wanted to play it. Like I said, it's not a perfect game. It it has its, its problems and stuff. But I thought I got some fun out of this back when I played it. It's, it was a pretty uh, nice little game. And last Game Boy Advance game I have is um. Super Mario World Advance, Super, yeah, Super Mario Advance. I played. This is another game I remember playing a whole lot on my uh, Game Boy Advance. This game was fun too. I don't think I ever beat it though. Like I tried really hard to beat this game. It, was, it gets really, it actually gets really tough later towards the end. Like I don't remember where I got stuck. It was either like a level or a level and a boss or something like that. I just back then I just could not beat it <laughs> no matter what. I don't. I haven't tried it since. Maybe I could beat it now. I don't know. I haven't uh, tried it since, but um, but uh, yeah. I this has been like a really long time I played this game, but it was fun for what uh, as far as I was able to get into. I know you could like play as different characters. You can either play as like Mario or I think Luigi too, or, or you could play as um, Toad and Peach. I think Peach had like a floaty extra jump or something like that each character had like their own little things that could help them and throughout the levels and stuff but yeah i remember this game being kind of weird and kind of hard too it also came with like another little game on it like i think it was just called mario bros or something where it's like one of those single screen games you just like had to like knock enemies you know hit underneath the um platform the enemies on to knock it over and then jump over and not and kick the enemy off the screen to really kill it I remember that was another like little game on here too that I played a lot. It was fun, but it was really hard. I remember playing it out a lot too. But yeah, this game is pretty cool too. All right, so that was the last of my little tiny uh, Game Boy Advance collection. Like I said, I, I don't have too many Game Boy Advance games. And the other one I had was a uh, like I said, Crash Bandicoot: The Huge Adventure. But I can't remember where I've placed that one. But if I ever find it, I'll show it. But um. Either way, now I'm going to move on to my PSP games, which is yet another small collection, but first game in my PSP collection is uh, Ultimate Ghost, yeah, Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins. This was my first taste of Ghosts and Goblins, really. Like, I'd heard of this, the games before, but I'd never played any of them, so this was my first introduction to it, and this game was really, really good. Like, I really like this game. It's a lot of fun. It is freaking hard seriously like on a first playthrough this game is pretty hard but if you know ghosts and goblins you know how it goes you know you um you do like the first loop or whatever of the game and that's not like the real ending or whatever so you have to play through the game again and get extra stuff to get like the actual true ending i've beaten this game once i've, I've beaten like the, this game on the initial one playthrough but i could not beat this game on the second run through to get the true ending it is just incredibly hard. It's a really good game, really fun. The soundtrack in this game is really, really nice too. I really like the soundtrack. I still remember a lot of the music from this game to this day. It's a really fun game to play, but good lord is the game hard, especially on that second play time. I remember the level I got stuck on too. You're in like this castle, and you have like this floating cloud thing you have to like jump on throughout the whole level of the castle. And I just, on that second playthrough, I just cannot beat that level. The, the, where you're in that castle, I forgot what like the specific level it was, the name it was, but you're on a cloud throughout that whole level. You have to like jump and dodge enemies and and shoot at things and all that stuff while on that cloud. Because if you fall off it, you pretty much just fall to your death. It's, I on the second playthrough, uh, the game gets even harder. Like in general, just in Ghost and Goblins, general the game is harder and stuff like that. And I've gotten, I've tried many times to beat that level and just this game in general on the second playthrough, I just could not do it. It is incredibly freaking hard. It's a good game though, it's just good. God, this game is tough. <laughs> Next I have is a uh, Hot Shots Golf Open T. I haven't really gotten into that into the Hot Shots Golf games because I'm not, you know, that big of a uh, golf game player myself. So I've never been, never got like deep into golf or play too many golf games but you know it's, it's hot shots golf you know it has a, a good you know degree of games for it it's 
been like an extremely long time. I think I might have got this when I got my PSP. There's something one of the early games I got when I got my PSP. But um, yeah, you know, this whole Strikes Golf is it's, uh, pretty cool. Yeah, it's always been like a long uh, standing franchise. It's always been a sign of good quality and stuff. Next, I have here is Ratchet and Clank Size Matters. I remember thinking this game was pretty cool. It was like the first, um, you know, yeah, right, like PSP uh, game. I think it was the first PSP Ratchet and Clank game. This is the first one I like, played on the PSP. I remember this game was pretty uh, cool. I liked it. It's been a long time since I played it, so, you know, I haven't. I don't remember like every little thing about the game, but I remember having fun when I played. I thought it was a pretty good game. I kind of vaguely remember the commercials they had for this too that were pretty funny. Like they had like the little like shrink ray or something like that, and like, they were shrunk one of their friends like out in the woods or something like that, and a bird swooped by and picked them up and stole them or something. It was one of the commercials for this. But uh, yeah, I remember this game was uh, enjoying this game when I uh, played it, but it's been like a long time, so I probably should do a playthrough again, just you know, see what I you know remembered about and all that stuff. The only other like handheld, I think this got a PS2 port. Also, I've only ever played the PSP version. I've never played the PS2 port, so I don't know what it's like. And the only other like handheld Ratchet and Clank game I haven't played was like Secret Agent Clank. And I've never played that game, so I don't know if that one's any good or not. I've always wondered if it was good. It was like one of the few Ratchet and Clank games I haven't played you know, was Secret Agent Clank. And I know that one also has a PS2 version, but I don't know. I don't really hear people talk about Secret Agent Clank all that much, so I don't know if it's like a good game or bad or whatever. I've never played Secret Agent Clank, so I don't know if I should get that one. And let alone if I want to play it on the the PS2 or the PSP, I've thought about getting it because, like I said, I've always w wondered about if it was good or not. I don't see people talk about it much, so one of these days I'm about to like look and see what's up with the Secret Agent Clank because I know you play as Clank mostly in that one, but I just I've never you know played. I don't hear anyone talk about it, so I'm gonna have to see what that one's like or something. All right, uh, final PSP game. <laughs> I told you these collections I have for these handhelds are pretty small, but the final PSP uh, game on offer is. Tekken Dark Resurrection. This is the, I think it was the original version of this game. I think the game also came out on PS2. It's Tekken 5, I think. Uh, I could be wrong, but I could be misremembering. I'm not 100% sure, but this is the Tekken that you know I had. This game was pretty cool too. It was a lot of fun. The uh, boss fight for this game was pretty tough. I remember you had to fight Jim Pachi. I hated fighting him. He was really freaking annoying. Yeah, I like this like super cannon or something you fire out of his chest and if he hit you with that it was pretty much a one hit KO that was extremely frustrating sometimes cause it was sometimes he was incredibly hard to fight sometimes he wasn't but um yeah it's Tekken I'm a pretty big uh, Tekken fan I haven't played literally I haven't I haven't played literally every Tekken ever made but like you know I've played a, a handful of Tekken games I enjoy you know out of the few fighting games I really play I enjoy Tekken a lot Tekken is a uh, they really cool, really solid franchise and stuff. So I still need to play through uh, Tekken 7 one of these days. But, um, yeah, Dark Resurrection was pretty cool. One of the music tracks I remember in this game specifically was the, um, the castle theme. There's like a, you find like this, um, this like frozen looking cat, like, like a frozen over castle or something like that. It looks, the, the stage looks pretty cool and the music in that stage is really, really dope. Yeah, I think this was the Tekken that introduced Lily. I think this is the Tekken she came from. I don't think I don't know if she was in with any Tekken before that. I think this is the one that introduced her. Maybe Dragon Off too. I think, but yeah, it's been a while since I played this. But yeah, it's Tekken. It's solid, you know. Tekken on the PSP is great. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much all my uh, PSP games. I, I should get some more PSP games. Like right now, lately, I've been focusing on collecting, you know, like your PS1 through three and uh, original Xbox and 360 games for right now. But you know, if I ever, heaven forbid, if I ever finish buying all the games I want to get for that, I wouldn't mind, you know, uh, buying some PSP games because there's definitely some PSP games out there that I, you know I've heard of that I've always wanted to play. I thought it looked cool and stuff like I always wanted to play the Death Junior games and things like that. And just you know, looking back at what other PSP games I might have f forgotten about over time that I wanted to, um, that I always wanted to play or something, and maybe just like 
buy some of those and you know get to play in the PSP again because I have not played my PSP in freaking years. I'm about to find where I played it too. I have it around here somewhere. I just probably must have like left it in the box or something, but within like a carrying case that I had bought for it because man, I missed the, the PSP. It was a great, uh, great handheld. Also, another game that I I have played on PSP but I don't own myself was um. Uh, Daxter. Daxter on PSP was really good. I remember my friend had that. For, he had a PSP also and he had that game and he let me borrow it and I played through and beat the whole game. So if I ever get into buying uh, PSP games again, Daxter is one I'm definitely going to buy and uh, play through again because it's been like a really long time since I played through Daxter but that game was really cool. Alright, final round for the handheld video and the final video in my uh, collection series video and that's the P the PS Vita section. My PS Vita uh, section is like the smallest one out of all my handhelds. I still want to get some more uh, PS uh, Vita games at some point but this is my current little physical collection I have as of right now. Okay so first up here is Dragon's Crown for the Vita. This is my most recent pickup. I picked this game up a few months back but this is my most recent newest um uh, Vita pickup is Dragon's Crown. Uh, just a little piece of paper in here that I wrote down, like the date and how much the date I got and how much I paid for it. Huh, I got this game last year instead. Whoop, wait. Bro, I really get. Wow, it's been almost a year since I got this game. What the heck? <laughs> I don't remember. I thought I got this game a while not that while ago. Holy freak. <laughs> You know, yeah, there's no manual for it. I don't think PSP, I don't think PS Vita games came with manuals, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, this is my most recent Vita pickup is Dragon's Crown. I always thought this game looked pretty cool. It's like a, a 2D side scrolling beat em up type of game made by, um, I think, did Vanillaware make this? And Atlas published it, I think. Yeah, it has like a very, very nice, very cool uh, art style. I always thought this game looked cool. and it was one of the games I had on my list that like, I wanted to play for the Vita. Like I said, the art style was dope and stuff, so I thought it looked pretty cool. So I uh, bought it with the intent to play it one of these days. Next I have here is a uh, Iconoclast for the Vita. I've always wanted to get this for a while ever since like uh, it uh, originally was a limited run release. I actually tried to get this game when it initially came out on limited run but like it got sold out so freaking quick I didn't even get a chance. <laughs> I'm like well there goes that and then you know a while some year a few years after that I saw it on a uh, you know, I saw this on Amazon. I'm like, yeah, I'm a, I want to get this because I thought this game looked pretty cool. It's a 2D side scrolling uh, platformer game that I've seen gameplay of. I thought it looked kind of cool. I was like, man, it'd be really cool to play this on the uh, the Vita. So, you know, I wanted a copy. I finally have one. So now I'm mean, still, still haven't played it yet. But one of these days when I when I get into uh, playing my Vita some more, I'm definitely gonna, you know, glad I have an like, iconic class and stuff too. And lastly, in my little Vita collection is Uncharted Golden Abyss. Now, of the physical Vita games, this is pretty much the only one I've really, like, uh, played through so far is Uncharted Golden Abyss. And uh, I, I really like this game. It was really cool. I enjoy I like how they handled the uh, touchscreen stuff. I thought the way the touchscreen stuff was cool. Uh, I like the story and the gameplay. This game was really, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed playing Golden Abyss a lot. It was one of the early you know ever since it came out on the Vita it was one of the games I really wanted to play so this is like the first physical Vita game I bought when I got my Vita finally and the first one I sat through and played through I thought this game was uh, pretty good I enjoyed what I played of it like I said I like the touchscreen stuff I even like how they handled the collectibles on one level like most of the levels you know you just walk around and pick up the collectibles there was one level where you just like tap the screen and pick up the collectibles I thought that was kind of neat <laughs> but yeah this was pretty cool I I think this does it take place story-wise. I think this maybe takes place before Uncharted One. I think it takes place before Uncharted One, or between One and Two. I can't remember exactly story-wise where this takes place, but I thought Golden Abyss was pretty uh, was pretty cool. So I enjoyed my time with uh, I played with this game. It was nice. Now, I, I can't wait to get some more uh, Vita games. Hopefully at some point, because there's definitely like a little list of uh, some more Vita games I would like to get. Like, I feel like Persona 4 Golden would be pretty cool to play on the Vita, and then like in, like a few other games that I I've made like a list 
uh, wrote down on a list somewhere that I uh, would like to play because I, I enjoy, you know, I haven't played my Vita a lot, a lot, but when I was slayed up, it was really cool. It's a shame how it just, like, you know, kind of flew under the radar, half because of, like, how Sony treated the Vita and half because of, like, how the general population treated the Vita. Like, I feel like the Vita is, like, an incredibly underrated handheld. Like, I mean, everything, like, the Switch, everything people hype up the, the Switch is doing, like, the Vita literally did it first. Like, <laughs> that the Vita was the one that like faded into the obscurity like I don't get it I can came I can't wrap my mind around it I think about it some of these days I'm like bro how does that even work <laughs> I don't get it but either way I feel like the Vita is like a crazy underrated uh handheld uh, uh handheld system in my opinion matter of fact honestly I would I'd, honestly I'd go so far as to say that the, uh, the PS Vita is the dreamcast of handhelds like about how the Dreamcast, you know, how the short life the Dreamcast had and how the Dreamcast was treated when it came out and stuff is real like similar to how the Vita was treated and stuff. And I feel like the Vita is just as underrated handheld as uh, the Dreamcast. People say the Dreamcast is un as underrated as a, uh, as a console. So I've always, for years, I've always been telling people how the Vita is like the Dreamcast of handhelds, honestly. So. Yeah, the Vita is incredibly underrated. I definitely want to get some more games for it, you know, before the prices for the thing go up even more than what it already is. Uh, but yeah, that's my little mini uh, handheld collection. <laughs> like I said, my handheld collection is not huge. I've never been that big of a handheld gaming person myself. Like, you know, when I was little and, you know, I was younger and stuff, I would, you know, have more time to, like, play handhelds and stuff. Because, you know, like I said, especially, like, you know, I ghosts and goblins and like have these uh, Game Boy Advance games and stuff I you know, remember like sitting in the back of my uh, parents car whenever we go somewhere and I'd be sitting there playing either on my Game Boy Advance SP or they were playing on my PSP like in the back of the car when we went places and stuff like that. I remember doing that a lot when I was younger but you know that was <laughs> a while ago so I don't really you know game handheld much anymore at all so that's why I haven't played these at all really that's why my collection for them is by far the smallest out of all the consoles I own and stuff I just really didn't play handhelds that much back then I don't really play handhelds that much nowadays heck even when I you know play my feet I'm just sat here on my bed playing you know you're playing Uncharted and stuff not really outside the house playing games or anything like that if I leave the house I'm not really thinking about playing video games I'm outside the house I'm too busy doing other stuff or whatever so I don't really Think about playing games at the, like the outside the house anymore nowadays, but um, yeah, this might just little uh, handheld collection, and as I say, this is my uh, final uh, video for my games collection. So after this, you know, I've pretty much shown you guys my entire physical game collection that I have up to this point. So I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed the, all the videos up to this point. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as well. Thank you guys for uh, all the support and all the views and all and watching me through my uh, game collection video. I hope you guys enjoyed, had some fun watching them and stuff like that and enjoy watching them. But uh, this is my final game uh, collection video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm Stack35 and I'm out. Please don't forget to rate and comment and subscribe. Peace.